All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, solve example 16.4, which is an example in the lecture notes, um, so in the lecture slides. And um, this is the setup, so I've drawn the setup on the board. So what we have is two source charges. We have a positive source charge and a negative source charge. Um, and they are both 10 millicoulombs. One is positive and one's negative. Um, and so 10 millicoulombs I'll rewrite as negative 10 times 10 to the negative 3 coulombs, just to get that in metric units. Um, and this is a right triangle. You might recognize it as a spe specific kind of right triangle, a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So down here is our right angle, and both of the sides are 10 centimeters long, um, which means that this angle is 90, and these two angles here are both 45. Um, okay, so, um, and what we need to do is figure out the direction, magnitude and direction of the, mat of the E field at this point here. Um, and so, graphically, um, we can just draw what's going on here. So I'll just kind of look at the location of the dot. We don't have very much space up here, so I'm going to redraw it over here. Due to the presence of the positive charge, E field always points away from positive charges. So the presence of the positive charge will have a net uh, E pointing up and away from the positive charge. So I'll draw that here as E plus. Um, and due to the presence of the negative charge, uh, E field always points toward negative. So I'm going to have a vector pointing down and to the right, um, right there. I won't worry about which one's longer right now. And we actually do know exactly what angle that is. If, if this here, that angle there is 45 degrees, just like that angle there would also be 45 degrees. Um, so we'll probably want to use that later, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, in order to have these things add like vectors in a graphical way, we want to add them head to tail. So I'm going to imagine just picking this one up and plopping it over here and redrawing that. So that would be that I have E positive points up and E negative points down to the right. And now they add like, add like vectors so we can figure out the net direction of the E vector that we are finally looking for, which I'll draw as being a little thicker is going to be something that's going to point up and to the right. Um, and so just figuring out the magnitude of E plus and E minus isn't obviously going to do it for us because um, these vectors point in different directions. So we can't just figure out their magnitudes and add them together. We have to separate everything into their x and y components and add them that way. Um, so what I mean by that is, in the end, this net E vector is going to be like a right triangle that has, so I'll just call this E, that's going to have an EX and an EY. And that is a right triangle that we could figure out the magnitude and the length of if we knew these two things. We can also figure out what angle that was, so we can figure out the direction of the net E vector. Um, and we're going to get it by adding these two things together. Uh, and so what I will say is that this E minus has components in the x and y direction. This E plus only points in the y direction. So we won't have to worry about splitting that one up into y, x and y components. But we will in the E minus direction. Um, move this to the inside so I can draw it a little better. So specifically, this E plus, it goes down to the right. So it's going to have an E plus x that goes to the right and an e minus x, or sorry, an e plus y. This is the e minus vector, so it'll be an e minus in the x direction and an e minus in the y direction. And now you can see that actually this e, net, e vector that points to the right is just identical to that e vector. So if we can figure out the length of that e vector, then we'll be good for figuring out uh, the thing that we need. Uh, this EY vector depends on the length of this and the length of that. So this minus that will equal the length of that. So what we're going to need to do, and this will be in part two of the video, is figure out the length of this, this, and this individually, 
And then we can use that information to figure out the sides of these two triangles, which is the, the final thing that we're solving for. So this is always the case um, in these sorts of vector problems where you need to do in two dimensions. In your homework, you have a square that has uh, four sides. Um, but I think if you think about it, uh, this is going to be very similar to what you have here. And we actually did kind of graphically a very similar problem in recitation last week, but we didn't do it numerically. So, but if you had three vectors, the same things would apply, right? So here we only have two vectors, but if you added a third vector, you know, it's again splitting the things that have x and y components into their x and y components and adding all of the x things separately from all of the y things. 